So there are a few simple steps that you need to follow to get clear vocal mixes using stock plugins in FL Studio. Now I recommend you follow these steps in the order I'll show you and you can implement this in your own mixing session and I'm sure you get similar if not the same results. So right here, let's listen to the vocal and hear it sounds. This is the unmixed. Now the most important step in mixing any vocal is making sure that it is well recorded and has as little issues as possible, okay? So since we have that out of the way, we're going to start with EQ. So I'm going to come right here, load of fruity parametric EQ. Now the reason why we're using EQ is because it's going to take out unnecessary frequencies, okay? Now a lot of people get lost in this simple basic, but the truth of the matter is that if you don't understand or master the basics, you can never get a decent mix okay so i'm going to come right here now there are three key parts you want to work on using eq in your vocals all right so the first part is the low end mode now because your mic picks a wide range of frequencies and even your vocals produce a wide range of frequencies they may not all be necessary in the vocal mix so want to remove the parts that are not exactly necessary in the mix and the second part also want to take out is resonance okay because when your mouth is producing sound is out of vibration the capsule is vibrating that is the capsule of the mic is vibrating so we want to reduce the resonance in the vocals now we cannot take out a hundred percent but we can minimize it so it doesn't come up later when we start applying other dynamic effects or processing like compressor saturation and all of that okay then the third thing you want to take out which I notice is common in a lot of home recordings is harshness or dullness. Now, a lot of times when I hear vocal recordings from home studios or beginner producers or mixing engineers is that it sounds either too harsh or too dark. And I'll show you how to fix that all in this mix. And since we've got that out of the way, let's look at how to actually use an EQ properly. So we have this right here. I'll simply right click, come to type, come to high pass. Right click again, come to other, come to step eight. Now I recommend you turn on linear phase mode, although it's not 100% necessary, especially if you're just starting out, but it doesn't hurt to turn it on, okay? So now I want to scoop between 80 hertz to 140 or 150 hertz. Now this depends on one type of vocal. Some vocals have a lot of bass, some do not have a lot of bass. Secondly, the type of mics. So I'm going to come right here, just take it to about 100 and hear how it sounds. Now every change you make, you should always listen for changes, okay? Do not just drag and swipe and then, you know, just follow what I'm doing. Every change you make, listen to it, okay? The aim of this tutorial is not for you to just follow what I'm doing blindly, but for you to understand and apply in your own unique situation. So I'm going to come right here, this settings icon. Now this is it at 105 hertz. Then I'm going to play it while I listen and play it while, I'm, while it's muted. Now, if you hear it, it's already taking out, you know, some body, some weight of the vocals. When it's turned off, it sounds a bit, you know, heavier, right? And all of that. So, 100 hertz is not bad, but let's try to take it to about 128 hertz. Go below, I like it the way you move. Turned on. Go, go, go below, I like it the way you move. Sexy, 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 I rose, oh. So now, what I recommend, and this is just a tip, not a rule, okay? Now, especially for more modern mixes, you may want to take out just a little bit more than you need. Again, this depends on your mic and the vocal type. Now, I know it will sound decent at around maybe 110, 120, but I'm going to drive it to about 125 to 130 and just leave it at that. I may come back and tweak this some more. Go, go, go below. I like it the way you move. Sexy, 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 I rose, oh, oh. All right, now that sounds good. So the next part I'm going to head over to is removing resonance. Now, how do you remove resonance? It's also pretty easy. We're simply just going to pinch the vocals. Just use your mouse wheel and scroll. If you don't have your mouse wheel, you can just come to this. If I move, you can see this guy right here moving. You can move this. You can see that. So you can pinch this and then don't make it too narrow, just give a little bit of room, okay? And then take it up. And then you, you want to listen out for parts that sound like this, okay? You see how my voice is sounding? <laughs> you want to remove those kind of frequencies, the parts that are most consistent, okay? So I'm going to sweep, try not to exceed the range, like, actually I don't want to cross this number three right here. Try to stick within 
the range of one and two okay try to stick within their respective range okay so so it sounds more consistent there i'll just bring this down you don't want to go too deep just about minus one to minus two db if you look at the top left of my screen you will see the frequency range so just somewhere around there is fine you come to the next guy you pinch again again allow some allowance and try to stick within the range you not cross boundaries okay then take it down again pinch it up then bring it down now the thing is the higher the frequency the more you hear this resonance okay again just pick only the part that sounds the most consistent there's always that one part in there that sounds like oh you know it's more consistent here then you just simply take it out okay so i'm going to come here yeah found that guy bring it down as well yeah right there now you don't have to rush this you just simply take your time and try to find those consistent parts and trust me you're going to get it right feel free to go over it a couple of times okay so this is not a phase you should rush it's a very critical phase in your mixing process okay now when it comes to the harshness remember i talked about harshness or darkness in the vocal now some people this is how their vocal sound and for some people this is how their vocal sound now to the untrained ear right it may sound like oh this hyped one sounds more exciting but the issue with this is that when you play it on other systems it's going to cause discomfort to the listener okay because a lot of sound systems especially headphones or consumer grade speakers that is speakers you have at home or the headphones you wear on your day to day they typically enhance two frequency parts the low end so you get a lot of bass and then the high end so you get of high fidelity okay so if you boost it too much here you're going to be having that harshness when you're listening to it on those other sound systems so taking that into account we're going to be careful of how we boost or how we cut okay so for that now i don't really notice that this vocal is harsh because again it was well recorded and the mic chosen actually fits the artist's vocal type but still if we had a harsh vocal we we'll simply cut it by minus one to minus three db or if we had a dark vocal, we we'll simply boost it by plus one to plus three dB. Now, this is not a rule, but a guide. And I typically recommend you stick to this one to three dB chain because anything more than this can be you just taking a huge risk, okay? But if you try it and it works for you, great. But typically for most situations, one to three dB of change is a safe place, is a safe space to be on. So I'm going to just keep this flat since I don't notice the change. And it's also important that you only make changes when you hear the problem mixing is all about solving problems that you hear keyword that you hear okay or key phrase <laughs> that you hear so if you don't hear it do not force yourself to hear it and try to fix what you're not hearing right so the more you hear problems the better you become at fixing them okay so since i do not hear the problem here i'm going to leave it flat all right then if i turn off the eq let's see how it sounds when the eq is off Turn on. Sexy, 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 a rose. She me to lose my mind, pretty adora. That's anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Moving very bad, 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 yes, you know. Moving very bad, 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 yes, you know. In a DVD, DVD, propagate. I hit the volume, making you jam me to the night. So you can hear that the EQ has solved a lot of problems, making it sound more clear. But we're not quite done. The next important thing that we need to do is use a compressor to fix the inconsistency. If you notice, some parts get really loud and some parts get, you know, quiet. Hey, before we go any further, you can now sign up for our online mixing and mastering class where you take it 100% online at your own pace and time. The course is 100% online and you get lifetime free updates. So whenever there's an update in the industry, standard of mixing you surely be the first to get it in your student portal so you have to just click the link in the description the course is from beginner basics to advanced lessons okay so if you want to sign up and you want to learn how to mix and master professionally where you save time without spending a huge ton of money click the link in the description of this video all right let's get back to this lesson so i'm going to come right here and i'm going to come to a fruity compressor now, how do we compress vocals? I've seen so many comments where some people say they can't hear compression, but trust me, if you just focus in this part right now, I think you will solve that problem of not hearing compression. Now, what compression does is really simple. Whenever something gets too loud, it tries to take it down. Whenever something is too low, it tries to bring it up. So it keeps it more consistent. Now, it's not going to be 100% accurate in doing that, but for the most part, it's going to keep it as even as possible so that it's not so obvious to the average listener, okay? So some key features you need to set, okay? The first is the threshold, which tells the compressor, okay, whenever the vocals or the sound coming in crosses this level, starts working, okay? So if you don't set it to the right level, it may not work consistently or it may work too hard. So we have to find the balance between working consistently but not working too hard. Then the next we also need to find out is the ratio, okay? The ratio is just simply how hard do you want it to work, okay? And then the other thing that, you know, for most parts, for beginners, I don't really recommend you play with this, but fast attack or rather attack simply means how fast do you want the compressor to start working when it crosses the threshold level, okay? That is, whenever it crosses that boundary, how fast do you want it to take effect, okay? So... Again, typically for vocals, I recommend a fast attack, okay? And then for release, you're trying to ask the compressor now, how soon do you want me to let go of the vocals, all right? So most times, I recommend you leave it at 200 ms. Some people take it to 500, which is a slower release. Some people even make it a much faster release. But again, for beginners, I recommend you leave it on 200. That is the default release time, okay? Then the game is just simply in changing volume because typically when you compress, the volumes may drop. So you can use this to adjust for the change in volume level okay so now let's see what all of this even mean so the first one to do is adjust the threshold okay so i'm going to come right here and most times i recommend you start at halfway okay then we can tweak as we go now the next thing we want to do is ratio now depending on how hard you want the compressor to work by how hard i mean how much inconsistency do you want to correct okay now the harder it goes the more artificial the vocal sounds okay and the and the softer the ratio or the lower duration number the more natural it sounds okay so for, for most vocals between three to five is a good space to be three for a softer more natural style and then four for like a medium style compression then five for like a harder compression so me some people even take it up to like six or seven but let's keep it at let's say four okay somewhere around four doesn't have to be exactly on four it could be 4.2 4.3 just on 4 ratio 1. So let's just hear how it sounds. So you can hear that the volume dropped, right? So that's why I need to increase the gain. I recommend you always adjust the gain of a compressor to match the before and after. So like you actually hear what's going on. Because this is the issue that lots of people have. Because when the compressor starts working, it's it may that make the volume too loud or too low, so you may not hear that actual work being done. So try to gain match. So you hear that? It sounds better, right? So now let's come back to the threshold because this is where, you know, the magic really is. So if I come, let me go to a more dynamic part. And how do I know a part is more dynamic? Let me make this bigger. You see this waveform, although waveforms are not the best way to judge parts that are more dynamic but for beginners is the easiest way so you can see these parts here you can see how they keep going up down this part looks a bit bigger than this part you know and this part so if i press play and even this part as well 
if I turn it off. You can hear how this part sounds really loud and this part sounds more quiet. Now to fix that, that's where the compressor simply comes in. So I'll turn it on. Now if you hear the threshold, it's catching it but not all of it. Now if I relax it some more. Again, I may need to adjust the gain so that I can hear what's actually being done. Now if you hear that now, it's catching even less. That's because the threshold is too relaxed. But if I take it to like maybe minus 30, now they increase the gain so that it sounds consistent. I hear that now it sounds even more consistent. So if I turn off the processing, let's hear it sound. When I turn it on, You can hear that now it sounds more consistent and just sits right in the track and once you get these two parts right, EQ and compression, every other thing you do in your mix will just follow and it will sit right in the mix. If you found this helpful, like and follow for more tutorials, tips and tricks. Cheers.